Linda was mine Till the time that I found her Paul and Jill And loving him And Sue came along Loved me strong That's what I thought But me and Sue That died too Don't know that I will Run until I can find me A girl who will stay Play games behind me I'll be what I am A solitary man A solitary man My name's Jonathan Masters from Mountain View, Arkansas Just come here to kind of appreciate what our ancestors used to do a long time ago The way they used to live and just enjoy life in the simplest way we can. I've been doing this for right at three years. Got started, there was a uh, gentleman from back home. He got me interested in it. He's a, he's a bladesmith. And I asked him about you know what he liked to do and stuff. And he told me, he said, well, I like you know, rendezvous and stuff. And I asked him, said, well, what is it? And he had a video that one of his friends had taped a long time ago when they went down on the creek. And, they just camp and set traps and talk about the shining times of the good old days and got interested in it. He took me to one and here I am. Through the thunder and pouring rain With cannon smoke settling over a broken land There's a pounding of a country's pain For lost souls, cowboys, soldiers, and mountain men As we walk back in time As we walk back in time Our tears roll down sad and worn faces While bombs burst over battle-scarred places As we kneel and pray for those left behind With lives scattered across the west and great mountainside as we walk back in time As we walk back in time We are the sons and daughters Of soldiers whose blood flows across our land We are the sons and daughters who fight for freedom again As we walk back in time As we walk back in time brains, Every animal has enough brains to tan its own hide you can take the brains and just smash them up and rub it in it. Dry it. You've got to lace this up in a frame. And you rub it in it like this, get this wet, start rubbing it in it. And then you have to start breaking it down. When I do it, I'll soak my, I'll mix brains of water, about a gallon of water, and, and soak the hide in it overnight. Then you take it out the next day and you wring it out and you lace it up in a big frame. And then once you have it laced up, you've got to take it just a, a blunt object and you start pushing on it like this right here you got to break it down because if you don't get it stretched and broke down when it dries it's going to dry stiff like this uh, that takes about six to ten hours to do one hide just just to break it down to get it soft the more you break it down the softer it's going to be my camp name is hide woman and 
I tanned the bear hide, and I brain tanned the body. I chemical tanned the face which is where you can see the difference in both the stiffness and the texture of it. The uh, longer you smoke it, the darker it gets, which is where the buckskins get their color. And also it uh, waterproofs it. A few other purposes for the smoke is in, in the summertime, you can put fresh smoke into your clothes and it help keep the bugs off of you. Because you know, if you're sitting around a fire, a campfire, you don't get very many mosquito bites or anything like that. Well, they would put fresh smoke in their clothes in the summer to help keep the bugs off them. And it also acts as a natural uh, body deodorant. It absorbs, it absorbs your body odor, keeps you from stinking. Smoke, it acts just kind of like a charcoal. It just keeps you from stinking. That's how they were able to go so long without taking the bath without stinking. It's because of the, the smoke in it. The spinning process is pretty well the same with anything that you have. You have some kind of fiber, it could be hair, it could be plant. And more or less, all you have to do is get it nice and clean and fluffy, and then you're ready to spin. Uh, linen used to be so precious that it, you could trade it at the traders ounce for ounce for gold. Usually what you see is Sleeping Beauty's wheel, which is called a great wheel or a walking wheel. And my, it's a little big for me to be toting around to a rendezvous. So it's, it's turned with the hand. This one is pedaled, but with a great wheel, it's a larger and it goes a lot faster because on this, you have a seven to one ratio between big wheel goes around one time and the little wheel goes around seven times. With a great wheel, you have a hundred ratio because what you're doing is you've got this gigantic wheel over here and what you're spinning onto is the spindle, which is just about the size of a pencil. Different areas, as far as different native tribes that would have been in the area, you, you know, you respect the land, you live off the land, don't take more, don't shoot game just to leave it set and use every part of it. You encounter somebody, always keep an eye on them. As far as whether they may be hostile or they may be friendly, you don't know. But if you just consider everybody as an enemy or hostile and you shoot them, kill them or whatever, they may end up being helpful to you and you just eliminated that one source. But on the other hand, always keep your powder dry and your rifle handy. Because the people in the area where they live, Native Americans or people, other trappers that's lived there for a long time, and you move into their area, you can learn things from them from a distance. You can also keep them close. They can show you where stuff is, as far as, you know, where's the nearest water source. My great-grandparents, they moved in this country from uh, Missouri in the late 1800s. And uh, they moved in and settled the place. It hadn't been settled before. There were some other people came in. They was from eastern Missouri. They were from, my grandparents were from western. They were from eastern around Cape Girardeau. They came in and uh, they asked if they could find water. My grandparents showed them you know, a spring and a well and they settled up the holler from them. I mean, that was about 1876, 1880. And uh, over time, you know, they moved further in, more family, they had families, became friends, and then moved off and went to more towns to find work when places came in. And then, uh, turns out I didn't know it, but that family that my grandparents showed us water was my wife's family. And we ended up not finding that out till after we got married. So if something would have happened and they would have been unfriendly to them, told them to leave and ran them off, who knows what would happen. My name is Ted Laney. I'm from Marionville, Missouri. Pre-1840s is what I emulate, try to emulate before the 1840s. I started rendezvousing in 1973, uh, and it's progressed from then. I travel basically all over the United States to big rendezvous. Our clothing, our tents, our uh, cooking utensils, our chairs, we try to emulate the pre-1840 era. 
This one is simply a 38 pounder. This is a fairly light bow. I build them all the way to 70 pounds and all the way down to 25 pounds for uh, ladies, children, younger adults. Uh, if you're not going to hunt with one, you don't need a 70 pound bow. You, uh, a lightweight bow like this is much more comfortable to shoot. You can shoot it all day without totally wearing out. Wow, you can walk around anywhere. There is no kids that go hungry in, this, in these camps. <laughs> They walk around, somebody's hungry, somebody gets fed. <laughs> everybody's always got food, and everybody knows everybody. I don't remember names a whole lot, but I remember faces. And I've known these guys for years and years. And I mean, we just, we don't see each other, but maybe once or twice a year, but they'll walk right up to you and hug you and everything, anything you need. Wow. But I mean, they're just a huge family. That's fantastic. And everybody knows everybody. But that's, that's the way it used to be. I mean, everybody used to be that way. Huh. A lot of modern life gets to people. People forget what actually built us. Uh, my name's Tom Reedy, and uh, I've been doing rendezvous probably since about 1993. Um, and it's it's a chance for us to get together and have a good time. Some of us don't see each other, but you know, like once a year or so, um, and others others more frequently. But back in the days. During the fur trade season, the, uh, the, uh, the trappers and traders would get together once or twice a year, spring or fall, you know, fall, and uh, trade their wares, uh, sell their, their furs and, and stuff for whatever goods and, uh, and equipment that they needed. They might need a new rifle or uh, they were sure going to need bacon and flour and beans so they could live, you know, when they couldn't, couldn't find game or something. But you can find a rendezvous going on any time of the year, all year long, anywhere in the United States and in several foreign countries. Um, I'm dressed up in kind of a southwestern style outfit, uh, which has been around Taos, New Mexico, Texas, uh, Arizona, southern Colorado stuff. And uh, my tent actually is a, called a plow point or a, a, a diamond fly. And you can you can set it up this way pretty much for inclement or cold weather and uh, if you just need, like need a shelter you can set up like a lean to where you just got one side coming up um, in the winter time build a fire underneath the front end of it and uh, put you a couple big rocks there to reflect the heat back in the tent and it, it's warm enough that you can live you know for several months like that it don't cost a lot to get started, and it can be as expensive as you want it to get. And just, just about getting together and having fun and educating the public. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hate? At the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight over the ramparts we watched and were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare. As the bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave My name is Jeff Cody. 
I've been doing this for uh, about 13 years. Yep, this is uh, this is what I do. Pretty much about uh, all but about three or four months out of the year, we're doing shows like this right here. We travel around, sell to the actors and public and so forth. And they had what's called the apprenticeship system, where a child, probably between 12 and 13, would actually uh, live with a smithy or some other type of craftsman for between five and seven years, usually about five years here in the Americas, and about seven years over in England. And they provide room and board, and you'd start out doing menial chores, making nails, as cleaning out the fire, and so forth. Obviously, as the skills got uh, better, his jobs uh, would increase. And anyway, after his time was up, he'd be given a set of clothes, a basic set of tools, and sent about a sent on his way to make his fortune. And then he would be called a journeyman. He'd travel around to different shops, work there until he got enough money, and start his own, find a place that didn't have one. Uh, but I mean, everything from door hinges, axes, rifle barrels, basically anything made out of metal was made by the smithy. I mentioned bolts earlier. The bolts were all had to be handmade. That's why you don't see it. And they were this is also why they're usually square, square head. The nails were so expensive they had to, a lot of uh, families would actually burn down their houses before they left so they could pluck the nails out of the fire. The type of material that we use now, which is actually mild steel, we call it iron, but it's, it's, it's not really mild steel, but it's just a, it's a high quality iron. But it's a little different than the type that they actually used then because they use what we call wrought iron. We always call the stuff we're working with wrought iron. It's wrought iron fencing and wrought iron. But actually it's not. Wrought iron was a kind of a lower end type of stuff compared to what we have now. It had a very high silica content and a heavy grain structure. Consequently, wrought iron was also very soft. Steel, being uh, basically iron with a high carbon content, which is hardenable because of the carbon, was more expensive and so used more sparingly. Now, but uh, they're they're very fun. You step back in time. That's that's what it's about. You step back in time and you put your mind in the time and. It's actually fun for us. And we just we enjoy it, and you know, we just, we just make our own little camp. We do whatever we want to do. <laughs> My daddy didn't like trouble if it came along. Everyone that knew him, every side that he'd be on. He never was a hero for his punchy shine light. But you could always find him standing up for what he thought was right. He'd say you've got to stand for something, or you'll fall for anything. You've got to be your own man, not a puppet on a string. Never compromise what's right. Hold your family name. Got to stand for something, or you'll fall for anything. Now we might have been better off, or owned a bigger house. If Daddy done more giving in, or a little more backing down. But we always had plenty, just living his advice. Whatever you do today, you'll have to sleep tonight. Say you've got to stand for something, or you'll fall for anything. You've got to be your own man, not a puppet on a string. Never compromise what's right, hold your family name. You've got to stand for something, or you'll fall for anything. Now I know things are different than they were in Daddy's day. But I still believe what makes a man really hasn't changed. He say you've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. You've got to be your own man, not a puppet on a string. Never compromise what's right. Uphold your family name. You've got to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. To stand for something or you'll fall for anything.
always take time to reflect on history because history repeats itself. And the hardships they endeavored to see a country that had never been seen, to go forward where no man had ever gone before, or no white man had gone before. And just take time to enjoy the simple things in life, don't get wrapped up in all the new technology. Because every everything in the past just as simple as cooking and everything else, firearms. Yeah. I've only had it three weeks. Goes back to it was a necessary part. And they improved on it. They improved technology as far as firearms from being a flintlock to a percussion cap. That was more reliable in the weather to our modern weapons day that our military uses overseas. It was all took one step at a time, just somebody trying to improve things over time. So just be thankful for what they've got and never forget those that walk before them to be able to bring them what they have today.